Good morning, Hickory Grove. We are so glad that you are here today worshiping with us online. I'm reporting to you from a brand new tropical environment. I read some new articles this week that revealed that COVID-19 does not stand up well in the heat. So here I am, sweating it out, trying to enjoy this beautiful weather. I wish I was there with you, but guess what? We can continue to worship online together. If today is your first time worshiping with us online, we would love for you to text the word welcome to the number on your screen. Well, I'm going to get ready for my scuba diving class and try to figure out how this thing works. But until then, let's continue to worship. I think I got it. Hey, good morning, guys. We're going to worship together. So right there in your homes, if you guys want to stand up with us and sing along. And hey, Grove Kids, I know you guys know this song and maybe even know some motions, too. So you all make sure you sing along with us, okay? Two, three, four.
are you? Oh my goodness, I miss you so, so much. I hope that your Sunday has started off well. I hope that you're happy, you're healthy, and I cannot wait for you to hear what Brother Bill has to talk about in just a couple of minutes, okay? Before he comes, I want to just show you the absolutely amazing sheet that Miss Bethany made for us again. If you come to 1130, then you know Miss Bethany, and she has worked on another sheet for us to fill out today while Brother Bill is preaching. So before we get to that, there's a couple of things on here that I just want to tell you about. If you were not able to print this, that's okay. Go and get yourself a marker and a piece of paper and you can kind of follow along too. Let me tell you what's on here. First of all, Brother Bill is going to talk about a very big word that you may or may not know what it is. The word is chasm. Raise your hand if you know what that means. Do you? Okay, if you don't know what that means, go right now. Get your iPod, your iPad, your phone, your mom's phone, and look up what the word chasm means. Brother Bill is going to talk about the great chasm that's between God and us. And he's also going to talk to us about how Jesus is involved in this chasm story, okay? So make sure that you're ready for that. A couple of other things that are on here, um, you can draw a picture of Jesus entering Jerusalem. Today is Palm Sunday, and next week, that means it's Easter. So this is the week that Jesus came into Jerusalem before he was crucified and before he came back to life. So if you have some paper and some, pic uh, some markers or crayons, you can draw a picture of Jesus entering into Jerusalem today while you're listening. Also, there's a picture of a cross on here, and Brother Bill is going to talk about what the cross means to us as believers, but you can draw a picture of the cross too at home. So if you don't have this awesome sheet, that's okay. Follow along and show us your work. If you fill the sheet out or if you just draw pictures and take notes of today's sermon um, on regular paper, we would love to see those uh, artwork pieces that you put together today. So post them on our Hickory Grove Kids page in our group, and we would love to see what you've been working on this morning, okay? All right, also, this past week, parents, we tried really, really hard as a Grove Kids leadership team to reach out to every single Grove Kid that we have cell and email information on. We wanted to send them a personal message either through Facebook or just a video. Um, and we tried really hard to reach as many as we could, but I know that we probably missed a few. If you would like for one of our leaders to send a video or to do a FaceTime with your kiddo, comment below and we'll get that information from you so that this coming week, we can send them a little message of encouragement and pray for them. We wanna make sure that our kids stay as connected as possible. So if we can help with that, please let us know. Just comment below and let us know how we can help you with that. All right, friends, it's almost time for Brother Bill to come and talk. Before then, I bet Tim and Trisha are going to lead us in a couple more songs. I'm super excited to sing. I know you are too. So let's get right back to worshiping our Savior, Jesus Christ. And guys, I hope to see you soon. Until then, bye. Here at Hickory Grove, we believe that we are able to do whatever it takes to eradicate lostness in Northern Kentucky. And one of the ways that we do that is by giving of our time, talents, and treasure. You see, it's because of your generosity, your willingness to go above and beyond, your determination to be sacrificial and show compassion with your hard-earned money that we're able to make a difference in this community. Even in difficult times like we have right now, I love seeing people willing to rise up and do whatever it takes with us. So thank you. Thank you for investing in Hickory Grove and thank you for investing in this community.
everybody and thank you so much for joining us once again live in worship though we are socially distanced we can still be spiritually connected during this time and you joining us in worship today is a big big part of that so I want to thank you for doing that and as you can tell uh, we have done things a little bit differently made it a little bit more intimate got the camera set up a little closer you can see exactly how bald my forehead really is now and uh, all the other things wrong up here you'll see but that's okay uh, I do appreciate you joining us live and feel free to connect with us in the comment section. We love to hear from you. We love seeing pictures of how you and your family might be worshiping there in your home today. Your favorite emoji, prayer requests, questions, anything you have, uh, feel free to connect with us there in the comment section. And uh, so here's the thing I've been thinking about today. We began this journey called All Things Possible literally um, six weeks ago in this series called All Things Possible. However, we began talking about this the very first Sunday of 2020. We declared that the theme for 2020 for Hickory Grove was going to be All Things Possible. Little did we know how much we were gonna be challenged to believe that. March has ended and it was a crazy difficult month. In fact, as the COVID-19 disease has continued to spread and continue to spread, Literally up to this point, it started to hit very much closer to home. As more and more cases are confirmed in Northern Kentucky, uh, we even had our first case of a member of Hickory Grove Baptist Church confirmed this week. As it gets closer and closer to home, you begin to start to think, is it even possible for COVID-19 to truly be eradicated? Maybe you're not even questioning that. Maybe that's not something that's been bothering you. But I think about the impossibilities that we have talked about up to this point, such as a wall, a prison, a giant. It seems like those are tiny compared to this microorganism called a coronavirus has basically shut down economies, has spread all over the world, has caused families to be isolated from one another. So it seems like this is just an impossibility like none other we've ever seen. And I say all that to tell you this, as impossible as that seems, it pales in comparison to what I would say to you is the greatest impossibility ever. The greatest impossible is the chasm that exists between us and God. That is the greatest impossible that has ever existed. And I wanna to talk to you about that today as we begin sort of into the Easter season together today. But before we do that, what is a chasm anyway? Well, by definition, it's a deep cleft in the surface of the planet. Um, it's a marked division, separation, or difference. That is how you would define what a chasm is. Probably the most famous chasm is actually the Grand Canyon. And uh, as I did a little research on this, I thought maybe it was the greatest chasm on the planet at 277 miles long. Turns out it's not. There is another one called the Yarlung Tsangpo Canyon in Tibet. 
It's 314 miles long, but technically that one is not the greatest chasm on the planet. As it turns out, there's another one in the Antarctic region in a place called the Princess Elizabeth Land, and it is 621 miles long, and it's underneath ice. So that is an incredible chasm. When I think about the Grand Canyon, I've heard many people talk about how they've had on their bucket list a rim-to-rim -rim hike of the Grand Canyon. Uh, I researched that a little bit and found out it's a 24-mile one-way track from rim to rim of the Grand Canyon. The descent is 14.3 miles at an elevation of 6,000 feet. The climb up to the other rim is 9.6 miles at an elevation of 4,500 feet. And most people spend the night down at the bottom, perhaps even two nights, before making that climb out. There are temperature swings, and most people recommend planning and training for that hike a year in advance. And that is a 24-mile track. Spanning a chasm is hard work, but removing a chasm is impossible. But let me read to you a verse we've been looking at for this entire series, Mark 10, 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. You think COVID-19 seems impossible. All things are possible with God. The greatest impossible is the chasm that exists between us and God. But yet I would say again, all things are possible with God. And today, April 5th, 2020, is Palm Sunday. It's the first day of what is often referred to as Holy Week or the Passion Week. And the reason it's called that is it commemorates uh, a triumphal entry that Jesus had into Jerusalem. Near the end of the gospel accounts in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see a, a, a historic account of what happened. On Palm Sunday, we read about it in Matthew 21. I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 11. It describes this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It says, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee. So this is the triumphal entry. This is the week of Passover. Many people were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate that feast. As it turns out, this happened five days before the death of Jesus. And so he entered in this city of Jerusalem with great fanfare and great popularity. Who would have known, probably no one on that day, that before a week would even pass, Jesus would actually die a criminal's death. But that is exactly what happened. Let me read to you six chapters later in Matthew chapter 27, starting in verse 15. It says, Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus? who is called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. 
Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. So that's how it went down. Only days later, after a triumphal entry in Jerusalem with people shouting, Hosanna in the highest, being treated as a king, now being treated as a criminal. And it's an amazing story because for three years, the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the Israelites, plotted against Jesus. And it culminated in them really conspiring uh, to pressure, politically pressure, Roman government officials like Pilate to actually perform the crucifixion. They weren't able to perform a crucifixion. It was illegal for them to do so. They had to get the Roman government to actually do it for them. And in order to do it, they had to conspire, rush Jesus through a, a trial, arrest him very late at night when no one was around, no crowds were around to protest it, and to do something in the dark of the night in order to get an innocent man to be cruelly executed. And that's what happened. I'm going to read to you Matthew 27, 27 through 31. It says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. And then down in verse 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. These Roman guards would tell us that. They'd say, something bigger than humanity happened that day. Something unreal happened that day. Something impossible happened that day. You know, it's been a long time since I've read this passage of the crucifixion of Jesus and was reminded of the other miracles that happened in the wake of his crucifixion, that the, the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom, which is a miracle in and of itself, that you can't rip something from top to bottom in that situation. It was something pretty miraculous, and it opened up the way from the temple courts into the Holy of Holies, symbolizing that the separation that existed between God and humanity had been removed. And the earth shook and even other resurrections happened and I don't even know what to think about all of that. It was a miraculous thing. Something huge happened that day. From a human perspective, a good innocent man was killed unjustly. I remember as a young boy watching Jesus of Nazareth as a miniseries on network television and it would make me cry. And this was even before I even believed in Jesus. But I just felt like, why would anybody do that to such a good man? 
And it could make us mad, it could make us sad, it could make us confused, but from God's perspective, this was what his plan was. Everything went as planned. And this is what is mind-blowing to us, that this would be God's plan, that though the Pharisees thought they were planning it, though the Roman political figures maybe felt like they were being pressured into it, and though many who loved Jesus mourned it, and we're mad about it or sad about it or confused by it, maybe even to some extent we are too, though all of that is true, it was actually God's plan all along. Let me read to you 1 Peter 2, 21 through 25. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. I love that last verse. You have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Because what happened is this. Jesus' death for us made it possible for God to be with us. Let me say it again. Jesus' death for us made it possible for God to be with us. The chasm that exists between us and God is our sin. It is our difference between us and God. We are so other. He is so other. He is, his ways are so better and more perfect than our ways. We are so imperfect, even evil at times, basically selfish by nature. We are so different. Our, we are, there's such a chasm greater than any chasm you could ever fathom physically. There's such a chasm between us and God. And yet we literally just read about how God made it possible for us to be with him. He removed the chasm by paying the price for our sins, sending his son Jesus Christ to take the punishment of our sins on his body on that cross. Let me read to you Romans 3, 23 through 26. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them and in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. This is a powerful passage. It reminds us that every one of us has this chasm. Every single one of us has it. Not only does it remind us of that, it also reminds us that every single one of us can have that chasm removed because Jesus paid the price for our sins. And, and God is able to be fair and just in his judgment of us because the wrath that we deserved, Jesus took it upon his body on that cross. And because of that, by us simply believing in Jesus and placing our faith in Jesus Christ, we are made right before God. We get to actually be with God. God. Jesus died for us so that God can be with us. That's the truth. And here's what I would ask. If someone were to ask you this, maybe you can give them this answer. Why did Jesus have to die such a horrible death, a cruel death on a cross? I would say this, a great chasm requires a great bridge. And it is a big chasm. A great crime requires a great punishment. God created a plan to be with, be with us by allowing his own son, Jesus Christ, 
to take the fall for you and for me. The punishment we deserve, Jesus took it upon himself and he did it willingly. He sacrificed himself. He did it so that he could be with us. He could be with us today, now, and forever. The chasm between us and God is sin. The cross of Jesus bridges the chasm. Faith is a walk across that bridge. Let me say that one more time. The chasm between us and God is sin. The cross of Jesus bridges the chasm. Faith is a walk across that bridge. The chasm is bad news, but the cross is good news. It's amazing news. There are worse things than COVID-19. Now that may sound like an insane thing to say. It may be easy for me to say it since I don't have COVID-19 right now. But there are worse things than COVID-19. There are worse things than death. The worst of those things is life and death apart from God. That is the worst of all those things. Because see, you were made to be with Him. You were made to be in relationship with Him. And I believe with all my heart that we can go through many, many years of life on this earth if we get to live that long. And if we live that long apart from God, we are never truly satisfied. We are never truly fulfilled. There is a void deep within our heart, deep within our soul, that none of the good things of this earth that we think we need, which are right now being challenged before us, none of those things will ever fulfill. Only a relationship with the one who made you, the one who loves you best, the one who knows you best, only that can fulfill the void in your heart and in your soul. The greatest impossibility that will ever exist in the universe has already been made possible. The chasm between you and God has been completely removed and has been completely bridged. And so because of that, I offer you this next step. Believe that Jesus died for you. That's a simple next step. Have you taken that step yet? I'm not talking about just checking a box saying, okay, yeah, you asked me to believe. I'm just going to say I believe. Faith is bigger than that. Faith is when you jump out of the plane trusting that the parachute's going to actually open. <laughs> Faith is when you bungee jump and you actually believe that rubber band you put around your ankle won't break. That's faith. That's belief. I'm not talking about checking a box. I'm talking about surrendering your life. To Jesus Christ himself. He paid the punishment for your sins on that cross. The beginning of Holy Week, that triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he knew that five days later he was going to die for your sins, for all your mistakes, so that he could be with you now, living the abundant life that he said he came to give in John 10.10, 10, but also giving you eternal life, which he promised for all those who believe in him in John 3.16. He did all of that personally to be with you, to walk with you, to be in relationship with you. Have you taken a step of faith yet? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he died personally for you? That's what we're asking you today. And if you're ready right now to take that step of faith, I invite you to take God up on this promise in Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He did it all for you. He wants to be with you, present with you now in your life, to walk with you through the valley that we're all currently facing in this quarantine, but not even just then, for the rest of your days and on through eternity, forever and ever and ever. So I invite you right here, right now, if you want to take a step of faith, and trust Jesus Christ with your very life. Call on his name right now as I pray. Father, I come before you right now, thanking you that you paid it all for us. Father, you said on the cross, it is finished, meaning you paid the full price for my sin. You completely removed the chasm between me and you, O oh God. And right now, for those who are tuning in and hearing this message, 
they may know that now's the time for them to take a step of faith. They've never trusted in you with their life. And now they want to do that. And Lord, may they courageously take a step of faith by praying a prayer, something like this. Oh, Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Thank you for removing the chasm between me and you. I cannot believe you want to be with me today and forever. Thank you, God. Come into my life. I give my old life to you now. Please give me new life with you forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wow, I'm really hoping that someone watching this prayed that prayer right now because I want you to know this. If you did, you are a child of God. You are His forever. And He's gonna walk with you no matter what you go through. No matter what life throws at you, valleys or the awesome mountaintops, He'll be with you through it all. And not only that, when the day comes, when you breathe your last breath on this earth, you're just going to begin living the best life you've ever lived because you'll be present with Him forever in a place called heaven. That is what you've been given freely through Jesus Christ. And I just want to let you know that from this point on, you get to live a life just worshiping Him and thanking Him for all that He's done for you and praising Him. In fact, we're going to close with another song of worship here in just a moment. But before we do that, I just want to invite you to let us know if you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ. All you have to do to let us know that is text the word FOUND to our landline number, 859-356-3162. Text the word found. You once were lost, but now you're found. You are now found in a relationship with Jesus Christ forever and ever. And once you text us that, we'll begin communicating with you and just encourage you and equip you in every way to continue to take more and more next steps with Jesus. Thanks again for joining us live. We're going to continue to worship now as we sing together. Break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, Your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope.